we got in one of the cheapest Apple CarPlay stereos you can purchase, the Power Acoustic CP650, which comes in just under $200. And to be honest, it's pretty dope. Not only is the CP650 the lowest price Apple CarPlay we've gotten in personally, it's the fastest I've ever tested. Seriously, this stereo cruises through its menus and its quickness was most noticeable when using navigation apps in CarPlay, which generally take a few seconds of loading time in all other stereos. It's safe to say that I was pleasantly surprised by the stereo. The six and a half inch widescreen display has a resolution of 800 by 480 pixels with a 169 aspect ratio. The screen is not HD, but it still looks great for such a low priced head unit. It even has a capacitive touchscreen, which I think makes up for the lack of HD screen making the display incredibly responsive to your touch as opposed to a typical clear resistive screen. Inside the box is a wireless remote control, mounting hardware in brackets, two wiring harnesses, one for power, ground, and reverse, backup camera, and another for high-level speakers and 4-volt RCA preamp outputs for front, rear, and subwoofer. External Bluetooth microphone, installation manual, and doubled-in stereo. The minimal rear connections on the stereo include radio antenna and the two wiring harness inputs. Again, Apple CarPlay was fantastic on this stereo. I was able to quickly move through apps like navigation, messaging, music, and podcasts faster than any radio I've ever tested, even faster than the Nexus and Exelons. Use the voice command button or microphone icon to access Siri hands-free control. Thanks to iOS 12, Google Maps and Waze now work with CarPlay. One downside is you cannot drag the screen in the navigation apps and are stuck to zoom in and out controls. The stereo does not support wireless CarPlay. You must be connected to the front USB port. Video apps do not work with CarPlay either and CarPlay is not a downloadable app you can simply add to your phone or stereo. Something interesting about this stereo is it is basically hollow. It may be difficult to see, but there are hardly any internal components inside the chassis because quite frankly, it doesn't need much. There's no disc slot, so no need for a DVD or CD player. Really all you see is a motherboard and the display. A creative engineer or installer could essentially turn this into a modular unit. Let's go over my cons. First, no Android Auto. One can assume in order to make this stereo so damn cheap, they had to stick to just one smartphone OS. Kind of a bummer for you Android users out there. Next, there is no physical home button. There's a home icon on the top left of the screen that brings you to the home screen while you're in a source. And if you're an Apple CarPlay, you have to press the power acoustic button. Otherwise, you can't get out of CarPlay. It's not a huge deal. This probably won't be an issue for most people, but I really prefer to have an actual home button that I can access at all times. 
Third, no HD screen. It's a $200 stereo, so I'm not gonna get too upset over the 800 by 480 resolution. Fourth, I had trouble playing my stored video files with a USB thumb drive. The stereo plays back MP4, AVI, and H.264 files. However, the files would only play back when I converted them below 720p and optimum playback worked when I reduced the resolution to 800 by 600 pixels with a low bit rate around three to five megabits per second. And finally, the stereo does not come with a full instruction manual, just a brief installation guide. The manual has to be accessed online. Let's do some testing. With the EQ set to flat, single channel driven, 13.4 volts, and a 40 hertz test tone via the USB, we hit pre-clipping at volume 32. The oscilloscope read 8.46 volts, and we picked up 14 watts RMS of power on our audio multimeter. Two channels driven, 13.4 volts, and a 40 hertz test tone, we hit pre-clipping at volume 31. The oscilloscope read 7.72 volts and 13 watts RMS of power. Next, we ran a 1 kilohertz test tone. Single channel, 13.4 volts. We had pre-clipping at volume 30. The oscilloscope read 8.38 volts and 12 watts RMS of power. Two channels driven, 13.4 volts. We had pre-clipping at volume 30. 8.38 volts and 12 watts RMS of power. Then we tested the RCA preamp outputs, which power acoustics says are 4 volts. This is where the testing got a little interesting. With a flat EQ via USB, Bluetooth, and auxiliary, we were only to get about 2.1 volts from the preamps. After some playing around, we finally got an increase in voltage when we added 4 dB to the source, or when we maxed out every frequency on the EQ, resulting in around 4.2 to 4.4 volts at volume 33. Fortunately, maxing out the EQ still resulted in a clean output and showed no clipping, so the preamps passed the test. Bluetooth 4.2 makes hands-free calling and wireless music streaming possible, and the Bluetooth music source provides very solid music tags, no artwork. I really like the layout of the radio tuner. It's not HD, but it was easy to navigate through. However, I wish the stereo had more interesting volume graphics. It's kind of small and hidden up top, but I do love me a rotary dial. The front USB port features 2 amp, 5 volt fast charging and is accompanied by a 3.5 millimeter auxiliary input for high quality audio playback. The stereo features a backup camera input with a reverse trigger wire. So when wired properly, the camera will activate on screen when in reverse. For easier installation, the stereo accepts OEM steering wheel control interfaces. In the display settings, you can change the wallpaper to one of three options and change the button color illumination or scan them. For audio customization, you get a 14 band customizable EQ with optional presets, balance and fader, Surround sound in case you want your music to sound like you're in a cave. And subwoofer control over the low pass filter and gain. Be sure to go to qualitymobilevideo.com to get all of your car audio and video gear with us today. Links for everything in the video bio below. If you enjoyed this video, go ahead and click that like button. But if you hate it, click the dislike button. Join the conversation below and subscribe to the channel if you're new. Thanks for watching.